Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 64 of the C-Suite show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that many enterprises have adopted cloud first strategy, a practice where business always considers operating a project workflow and process in the cloud before any other means. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the C-Suite show again. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here and this is kind of a fun topic. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. And look, it's a, it's a really fun question because I think a lot of people do tend to, you know, follow the crowd when it comes to what's the word on the golf course and, uh, and people tend to sort of jump on every bandwagon. We had this conversation a few months back about shiny objects and yes, yeah, so the opening question then I guess is, is cloud first right for you or are you just going to be following the crowd in the cloud? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, uh, that's really kind of a good question because I am talking to a lot of people that you know, say we're cloud first. And, uh, you know, actually the United States government back in 2008, you know, made the same declaration and they're really kind of no closer in the cloud than they were back there. And but you know, maybe some of the new contracts may change that. I think the reality is that it doesn't really make sense for people to pledge allegiance to a particular type of technology. It does make sense for them to understand that they're going to look at cloud first and you know, try to see if they can um, basically put the systems there because those are typically going to be cheaper, better uptime, better security. But for you to kind of force fit everything in the cloud, whether it's a public cloud or a private cloud, I think it's going to run into issues. And I think that um, legitimately people should be looking at, at, at uh, cloud. But the reality is that we're, we're kind of swinging the pendulum one way or the other. I mean, back in 2000, you know, six, 2007, when I first got into cloud, I was walked to the end of the property many times when I was mentioning, you know, running data systems and systems outside the domain of the company. And now um, those are gone. But my concern now is that people are, you know, adopting it too quickly and moving into, into states where it really kind of doesn't make sense. And so, you know, since this is a C-suite show, one of the things I would say uh, to people that are, you know, doing cloud first are you looking at the use cases? Are you looking at what the business needs to do? Or is this, you know, basically we, we're going to pick Amazon each and every time or Google or Microsoft and we're going to move our data there and we're not going to look at other platforms and making it happen. What if it's, you know, cheaper on the on-premise and what if it's cheaper in a managed service provider? And lacking those options or ability to do that analysis, I'd be very scared of what people come up with. I mean, certainly I can make anything work with enough money and time. But the reality is that in many instances, if they're doing anything first, mainframe first, managed service provider first, you know, you know, it's uh, AWS first, Microsoft first, all these sorts of things, they're bound to make mistakes because ultimately they're not looking at all the options and the best breed solutions, and therefore they're not considering the best, you know, best solutions for the applications that they're running. So that would be my guidance that I can understand why they're saying cloud first and, you know, while they're all gung ho cloud, which is great, you know, it definitely goes after what I was telling them years ago. Uh, it scares me that we're not still looking at the basic application requirements, data requirements and making sure that we don't make mistakes. Yeah. So what you're saying is, well, it's really down to that, that C-suites level to identify the strengths and weaknesses in the business and where the opportunities really lie with say a cloud first strategy and not a cloud only strategy where you're you know potentially going to put an unnecessary pressure on the business that really doesn't need it um, and it just yeah you're right it just makes it, it makes so much sense so failing fast is important we've we've covered that a few times so if someone was going to fail fast where would you say the best place to move would be in the business to fail fast in that's 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 going to be that's, that's going to accelerate that learning curve for that transition to to a, a cloud cloud policy yeah I, I would say that uh, they already have a center of excellence and you really could should um you know as a, as a concept and you should adopt those things within the organization not just because we're you know trying to get a single governance organization that's going to help you move to particular clouds but the ability to kind of understand what a cloud does, what it can do, what it can't do, how much it costs, what are the costs outlook, you know, for three years, five years, 10 years, you know, what are the risks we get into, things like that, and just kind of provide the guidance. And the reality is, is that if we fail, we're going to learn from those failures and typically dial that into other, other projects. And so the cloud um, center of excellence within these companies should be able to basically store that information, repeat it back out to people who are looking for it. So they'll have access to research and 
you know, modeling tools and things like that. The reality is that is it happens very little. I, I mean, I, I don't see when I see cloud um, when I see cloud cloud um, centers of excellence within organizations, they typically don't have a lot of sway with IT. They don't control budgets. They can't fire people. And so, even though they may be good at doing PowerPoint presentations and explaining the differences between Amazon and Microsoft and Google or other cloud providers. Um, the reality is, is that they really need to be actively involved in most of the decisions that are, that are happening out there. They really need to have the juice to understand that if we're monitoring six projects that do fail, that the lessons learned are dialed back into the other you know, 50 projects that are ongoing. And I think that most organizations don't do it. We have a tendency within the IT world, you know, you're sitting down, we manage by magazine, we, we go after the hype and the shiny objects. And I think the cloud's a new shiny object, it's probably an old shiny object now. But I think that there has to be a pragmatic look at any sort of technology that you're moving, moving toward. And there has to be uh, people within the organization who know how to apply that technology in a proper way. And that, that's what kind of scares me to death. The, 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 the real thing that, that I'm, I'm finding is that all this stuff will work. And so in other words, you know, me building an application in a data system in the cloud, you know, whether it's AWS or Google, whoever they're looking at, that's gonna work because there's really not a lot that's gonna make you fail in those environments, but it may not be as efficient as it could be. And so while people declare success of getting something running you know, within Google, um, they're paying $100,000 more a month on maintaining that application you know, versus the thing running on premise and hardware that we're depreciating for the next 10 years. So why don't we just leave it there? Uh, and then vice versa, people are leaving things on premise when it could make you big money you know, by running it out in the Google environment and make the application much more efficient. So it really comes to degrees of efficiency. So when you talk about failing, I don't see too many people out there fail. If they do fail, they don't admit it typically, but they're getting to a level of inefficiency that really is going to have the application and the data set die of the death of a thousand cuts over the years. Yeah, no, I, I agree with everything you've just said. Some very good points. In fact, you're right. It's, you know, Sometimes it makes more sense to leave the right thing behind and leave it on an on-prem system. But essentially, your cloud is only as good as your in-house skills with training and with the, 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 the capabilities of your team already. And the, you, know, you really can't be looking at a, a cloud-first strategy and not already have the, the support network or the, the right training needed to underpin that investment, can you? No, that's part of the equation. I mean, if we're going to go cloud first, do we have the people who are able to take us there and maintain the system? Is there a cloud ops uh, organization around? Is there um, security and governance and all those things really kind of need to exist? And that actually, you know, layers into you making a decision. If you're going to go cloud first, we typically have lots of people around who know that particular cloud. But it actually may muddy up the waters because people may put too much emphasis on the fact that we have an investment in these skill sets you know, therefore, you know, make the wrong decision, end up being very inefficient, using the battle cry of, well, we have people around here who know this particular technology. But, you know, we've been making these same mistakes over the years. We had, you know, Microsoft first and IBM first and, uh, in, um, you know, Univac first. We keep going back. And they never were good ideas, probably more successful at the time because you focus on a very narrow set of technologies. Now with cloud, you know, it's a thousand factorial solutions that you can have. You're mixing the databases and the cloud platforms, the application development systems, the DevOps systems, security systems, and the governance system, all these piece parts, they really kind of come together. And so while it's easier, and probably on, the, on you being a bit lazy, to just go ahead and say that we're going to do something um, in the cloud each and every time, or in typically it's gonna be a specific cloud, you know, not searching and looking at the best of breed solutions to make that happen. Now there's a downside to that. We're gonna make things more complex because we're mixing different solutions. The best of breed solutions are always gonna be different from project to project. So we're gonna to have to fight the complexity monster and things like that and figure out ways to do it. But I, I, I think I still see so much downside in you building inefficiencies into your system that it really still makes sense for you to go for best of breed. I mean, look at cloud first if you wanna do that. Maybe that's what they're saying here. But if you're force-fitting cloud computing and every solution that you're coming up with, then typically you're going to be wrong a certain amount of time. You have to consider that. And that, that wrongness is going to cost you money. And by the way, if you're a C-level person, you're CEO, CTO, CIO, um, those are, should, should be some of the questions you're asking in the meeting. You know, why are we going with that cloud? You know, have you looked at other alternatives? You know, how much those alternatives cost and who's, 
you know, how am I gonna, you know, get there and how are you gonna build this within a DevOps organization, how are you gonna operate it, how are you gonna secure it, all these sorts of things. And they're typically not asked because people have a tendency to kind of go along with the crowd. Now, AWS and Microsoft and Google and, you know, um, the, all the public cloud providers have been anointed and it's okay, you know, politically correct to move the move to those environments, but in some instances you're making a mistake and you should really understand when you're doing that. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. So who who essentially is going to be in the driving seat for this this cloud first? Is it going to be led from the CEO, the CTO, the CIO, or a bit of all of those coming together? What do you think? I think it's going to be more the CIO is going to be leading this. And so, you know, they've bought into cloud. Um, typically, it may be a new CIO because they replaced the other one because he wasn't do, wasn't going to do cloud. Um, and at the um, with the encouragement of the board of directors and the CEO uh, to basically move in this direction because they view it as, a, you know, it has the impression of being cost cutting, very efficient, provides agility and speed to market, which it does. And so they should be promoting the use of cloud computing. Um, but the CIO also needs to take a pragmatic approach to any utilization of technology, whether it's containers or serverless computing or all the other, um, you know, things we're chasing right now, and make sure that it's applied properly. Understand what it does and the patterns of success, and when you can apply it, apply it to certain application types, what those types are, what sectors are going to be more beneficial from those things. That really needs to be part of this, and I think that. Um, that's those people should start asking the tough questions. I don't think this is going to get easy anytime soon. No, it's so true. And look, there are so many layers and there's so many people coming in at different start points as well. So although, you know, cloud is, is, is very much out there, some people aren't the early adopters. They are watching the crowd. They are looking and seeing what their, you know, uh, sort of um, business com com camaraderie is within that sort of cloud circle. What, the, what, what, what sort of a return on investment they're getting and how long it took to get there. And I think that's really important. So we covered some great topics uh, today, Dave. Thank you. And it, it leaves us on nicely to your, your top three tips if you'd be good enough to share. Yeah, number one is watch the follow, you know, watch the following of trends. We just talked about that. And so um, I'm all in cloud. I've been a cloud guy for the last, you know, 20 years um, as far as figuring out the, the growth of the public cloud and the idea of the public cloud. But the reality is I'm also healthy, uh, I keep healthy skepticism about what it can do and what it can't do. And also the fact that we're looking at the application in a particular instance. So we're looking at a tactical application of a workload and the data set and things like that. And where they should exist isn't always gonna be really relatively apparent. So you may know AWS or you may know Microsoft, you may know Google, you may have you know thousands of people around who understand those platforms, but that still may be the wrong solution. You know, So kind of keep that in mind. Keep an eye on the costs and the benefits and the costs have a tendency to be hidden within cloud. So in other words, um, people rarely don't know that they're getting charged for networking time and use time and storage time. And, you know, they may find that the buckets only grow in increments that are, you know, a, um, you know, a, a thousand gigs or more and, and those sorts of things kind of pop up. And so you need to be able to wear what your costs are going to be and what benefits you're going to get, whether you go with cloud or not. Then finally, you know, never be afraid to hit the reset button. And I find that when uh, we, we did talk a bit about failure, and I think people do need to fail fast, but when you fail fast, you're able to hit the reset button and go back to the start and basically try it again. Um, people take um, dumb ideas you know, to a logical conclusion that I, I really don't get. And so they'll lose millions of dollars more than versus when they realized you know, six months ago that the thing wasn't working up to par, that they hit the reset button and go back to the drawing board and figure something else out. But people have a tendency to take dumb ideas uh, and and work them in the organization until it does real damage. And so I'd rather have someone admit failure, hit the reset button and go back to start than, than keep with a dumb idea that pretty much most people know isn't gonna work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Great top tips there, Dave, and thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm there as well, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. You can check us out on all the other social media streams as well. We've got some great blogs. All the links are in the description box below, so come and check those out. Uh, remember to support us on, on Twitter and stuff like that. We've got lots of tweets going out at the moment, so uh, yeah, it'd be really great. And thanks for watching. And remember to, uh, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. Now, every week, I almost always forget to mention this. So again, the links are down there below, so make sure you subscribe to our podcast as well so you don't have to watch us you can just listen to us thanks for watching and until next week